Hey guys, Chris Fate with Cheat the Game coming back at you. Today I'm taking a look at Regalia of Men and Monarchs. It's a RPG turn based strategy with uh, like a choose your own adventure style of <clears throat> gameplay. And I really like stuff like that. But we're getting into uh, hacking basically the infinite health and you know just normal type things now the conventional scanning it's not impossible to do it that way however the bytes or excuse me the values are stored in a in a particular way that makes it extremely hard to find and a lot of the fights that you get into or the battles that you get into don't last long enough for you to really do an encrypted value search the battle's over with before you can really uh you know find anything to try or you end up dead and these addresses will just change on you at the drop of a hat so uh, we got to think of other ways we can go about it well luckily this game uses the mono feature and that's what we're going to be looking at today now Stephen Chapman gave a couple of great lessons in regards to using the mono feature and a lot of the technique that I'm using is based off his lessons and I'm going to link those in the description he gives a full explanation of everything and I'm just basically putting his lesson into practice because that's the best way to go about hacking this game and that's what we're going to be doing also before I get started right quick I want to thank uh, Colonel RVH over at Fearless Cheat Engine for the table he worked on uh, he worked extremely hard on this and has done a great job with updating it a lot of very hard to find attributes in here uh, I am going to be giving you my codes that I found myself. However, I'm taking out anything that is his. Because I do have some of his in uh, my cheat table as well. But you can go, and I'll link that in the description as well, where you can go download his cheat table. And you can combine mine with his if you want to. And uh, that, that's fine with me. Also, I, I left on here at the very end. Let's see if I can get to it. At the very end, I went ahead and put... Uh, just a script for infinite health and also massive damage that you can achieve in the inventory screen when you go in and out and that's what we're going to be looking up today is infinite health and if I have time we'll get into uh, max damage as well so bear with me let me bring everything up and I'll be back with you momentarily okay I'm brought everything up here and I'm not I'm gonna be uh, taking these back out but I've got a bunch of codes for it already now like I say mine are mixed in with Colonel RVH's uh, cheats as well and I'm going to be taking all of his out that he has done and I'm just going to leave the ones I did and then you can download his cheat table and combine these cheats with him as well if you want to alright I just want to make sure that he gets full credit for his hard work and he done a great job with this and uh, my hats off to him but uh what I'm going to do is we're just going to kind of do this from scratch and I'm just going to show you uh, what I do and how I do it when doing a mono. So we're going to go ahead and delete this record. And let me, uh, it's not letting me delete this. Let me just bring up a new cheat engine. Alright. Let's reattach it to the game. And no, we don't want to load associated table. Make sure nothing's activated. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to activate mono features. Now, we can do it up here easy enough, but we can also make a script for it, too. So, it's a good time to show you how to do that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to memory view. And we're just going to click auto assemble. Go ahead and add the enable and disable. And this is how you can create a Lewis script for launching the mono data collector is what it's called so we're just going to go ahead and tell it we want to use Lua all right and it's launch mono data collector capitalize each word and then just uh, parentheses open and close and then we can put a condition in there and I believe uh, Colonel RBH put a condition in his as well uh, if in parentheses, okay. Is equal to zero. Then we want you to print an error. And this is how you make a text. Oops, my bad. 
and we'll just say failure to launch. This will open up Mono Data Collector, and we'll just go ahead and uh, put end in there, and we'll just close it off with uh, assembly. That should be good. Make sure you got everything spelled right. I don't know why I missed spell those, but I'm not the world's best typer. Uh, let's see if we can add that to the current cheat table. Can, good. And we put this little condition in here. If something goes wrong or uh, it closes out on us, then, you know, it'll go ahead and, uh, oops, sorry about that. It'll go ahead and uh, shut off mono and just give us an error report. So let's see if it works. And if it works, this up here will become check and it's already check mark, but uh, that's what causes it right there. So let's go ahead and uh, get started here. I'm going to go ahead and name this uh, Activate Mono. Alrighty. Now let's go ahead and get into the game. And I'm going to go ahead and find a place that, where we can fight. So let me just find a day here and we'll just go pick a place. Now when you bring up the mono dissection, which we're going to do right here, dissect mono, these features right here, you're going to get this little address right here. And mostly what we play around in is assembly C sharp. And you're just going to spin that on out. Now you can literally spend hours just scouring through all the different things. And that's what you're looking for. You're, these are string based functions here. Uh, these are the names of the functions that the devs put into the game. And what you do is you go down and look and see what these things are calling or what these functions are called. And when you play the game and everything, you really want to familiarize yourself with the game and uh, most everything that it does. And uh, these are going to make a lot more sense to you uh, if you have a game that uses the uh, mono feature. Not all games do usually unity type games dot net type games things like that will uh, use the mono feature and you can see different things that you can go play around in and that's really what you do this is nothing but a trial and error type thing and a lot of uh, game hackers will tell you this will just get you to a location but you still want to do it you know do your scripts normally like AOB injection and stuff like that and I agree with that but what we want to do is we, we we scour around. We're looking in here for just hours on end. We're just trying different things. Uh, but what we're wanting is infinite health. So we got to find things that are in regards to that. Now, to spare you the hunt, peck, and search, uh, I already know where it's located or roughly know where it's located. And uh, that's what we're going to be looking at. So when you look, take a look here, these are your battle conditions. This is for the battle combatant and you see CPU controller it even tells you devs did a great job of telling you what functions controlling what so these are your enemies and these are your enemies movements all their effects and stats and everything all right so when we come down here you see a battle combatant controller and we also have a player controller somewhere I'm not sure exactly where it may be on down just a little bit, but what we can do is we can go down here to Battle Combatant Controller, go to Methods, and we just take a look around and see what each thing is in charge of. And you can see it's just got every single type of situation in there. It's got attack, attack target. But this is what we're interested in. We're interested in damage. What is damage? That is the damage you take that decreases your health, obviously. <laughs> well, we can go play around with that and see what we can get. So we're going to jet that and go to it. And that'll carry us to the start of that battle combatant controller damage function. Now let me go ahead and save what I got just in case. And uh, let me be right back with you and we'll pick up where we just left off, all right? Okay, thanks for holding, guys. Now, like I was saying, picking up where I left off, we come to Battle Combatant Controller Damage. But we really don't know if it's for just us, the enemies, or for both of us. It could very well be. Now, there are several different places you can find damage. And these, like I say, these are just functions. And they're being called by other functions. And so there's more than one way to uh, get to these 
different controller type functions here and they're, they're scattered throughout here because different things are calling that same function so what I want to do is I want to continue looking around and when we come to the uh, combatant player controller we have the CPU controller up here where we just previously was there it is and then we come down here and it tells us that this is the player controller well, that's obviously us so that's more of where we want to be so I'm gonna look into this one and I'm looking for a specific thing I'm looking for damage or anything that reflects taking hit points away from us we know that's our attack and we come to damage right here now does this care us to the same location or to a different location well we can see it carried us to a different location so that's what we want to try first and we just go down here and usually the first thing I recommend doing is put a return up here and Stephen Chapman does that as well however I'm not doing that this time I'm coming down here and I'm gonna knock out some calls and see if that makes any difference so first of all I want to get into a game actually let's go ahead and uh, knock out this very first call R11 It's calling a value so I want to go ahead and replace that with a code that does nothing and all we're doing is we're just monkeying around right now we're just playing around and seeing what things do you will crash your game a lot uh, messing around in uh, mono but that's just the nature of the beast but you can find some really good stuff in there if you just go in there and explore and just try things out and like I say conventional scanning was really getting us nowhere earlier uh, we could not find health as far as a numeric value I don't know if it's encrypted stored a different way or, or what's going on but uh, when we're having that kind of trouble it's not impossible to do that but uh if there's other means that we can use we're definitely going to try so let's get over to another area where we can fight all right we're just going to go ahead and enter that and get past these little sections not sure oh, there we are okay so automatically we go directly into a battle now remember i've knocked out that first call and i'm just going to see if it takes any damage away from me if it doesn't, then I know we have the right location. So we'll go ahead and start battle. We'll deploy our characters. And we're just going to use three. And we can hover over and see what our health is. So I'm going to come over here. And I'm just going to let them well on, on her for a bit. I'm not going to really attack back right now. And we're looking at her health. You see her health? We got hit, but her health did not go down. Let's see if we can pause this. Let me replace that again. Now we, I don't know if we got to enter another fight for that to go into effect or not, but let's take a look now. Now her health is going down. You see that? Okay, he missed, so... Okay, her health went down that time, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that value back off. There we go. Alright, we're at 614. <clears throat> so it's her turn again. I'm going to send her back to the enemies, but I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to attack. Well, maybe we should do one attack just to see if their health is still coming off or not. Okay, they are losing health, so let's end our turn. Let's end everybody's turn, and let's see if they attack her. We're keeping our eye on her health right now. And she did not go down. He's not going down, but... They miss, so that don't really count. 346, and she still stayed at 614. So this is a good viable infinite health, and we see our enemies can still be defeated. So we can go ahead and write a script for this. So we're going to restore that with the original code. 
And it's still playing in the background, but that's all right. And what we want to do is, first thing I want to try is just doing a regular A or B injection. Now these addresses are dynamically placed, so that means that they change every time you bring up the game. So we're going to try an AOB instead, and we're going to put uh, player uh, health. One. All right, let's see what we got here. There it is. And you see we got that call right here. Now I'm not going to allocate memory for this because all I'm really wanting to do is knock out that call. And you see that call is only three bytes. So that's all we're really going to be needing. So what I want to do is I want it to find that location via the AOBs. I'm just going to take all this out. I like putting that up here. There we go. So we know that the call that we want to knock out is actually seven bytes away from the beginning of the scan. Also, what we're going to learn in the next lesson, we're going to continue on with this game. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you when Cheat Engine cannot find a good AOB. It says cannot locate a good AOB. I want to show you a trick that I sometimes use uh, to get it to actually start working, but that'll be in the next lesson, okay? And it's really good, and it's based on having to deal with these uh, type locations, this address plus bytes, and I'll show you how to do that. It's really interesting. But what we want to do here is we want to knock out those bytes, and we know that a knock is 9-0. So we're just going to knock out those three, and then we'll just have it set back to normal when we turn it off. Take out the deallocate memory. So let's assign that to the current cheat table. And let's get back to here. And we just want to test this to see if that's going to knock it out. We're going to put player health for right now. And we're going to go ahead and... Let it do its scan, and you see it knocked it out. Will it turn it back off? It does. But for right now, all we wanted was infinite health. So do we have it? Let's see. Let's go ahead and get him over here. I'm just going to let them well on me. So we're back over here. She's at 614. And it's not knocking anything off. Shields are remaining constant. Health is remaining constant, so they're not taking any damage whatsoever. So next go around, we're going to fight back. Okay, thanks for holding, guys. Now I want to show you this. Now I had to take the game down and bring it back up. And now when we go to look for our health, we can't find it. The address or the AOBs have changed a little bit. So, and I've already tried to uh, put some wild cards in, and now I get like 250 results. So instead of going through, now AOBs are the better route to go always. I always recommend going the AOB route. Uh, however, in this particular instance, you now when I bring it back up, it's always this address, this Battle Combatant Controller Damage Plus 29. That is the area I'm always trying to knock out. I've loaded it up several times and it's always been that address. So as long as we don't update our version, it will always continue to work for us. Now if you update, get DLCs and update and things like that, then these addresses may change on you and you'll have to redo it. But you know where to find it, so it's not that big a deal. However, when you're making trainers and things like that, you probably want to go the AOB route just in case. But be that as it may, we're going to do that a little bit differently now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an entirely new script instead of using the AOB. And what I want to do first is I'm going to copy all this information to clipboard, just like that. And I'm going to bring up a fresh notepad. 
And what I want to do is I want to copy this information down. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and auto assemble. And then I'm going to do a code injection. And this is the address we want right here. Just this. So what I'm going to do is I'm telling Cheat Engine that at this address, let's bring that over here so you can see it. At this address, I want you to knock out these three bytes. And when I disable it, I want you to restore those three bytes. And all we got to do is this right here. Just paste in that address with a colon. Define byte 909090. And then when we disable it, I'm just going to paste that here. We're just going to put those bytes right back in, which is, if you can look, 41FFD3. See that? And we also copied it to our notepad, so we can use that instead. So, like I say, this only works on that particular version. I mean, it may work in other versions too, but it just depends on if that mono address does not change. So, uh, and I really don't know. To be honest, I rarely use Mono, okay, so I try to find these things normally and then I'll go dig around in Mono to get things that maybe I just didn't even think about. Player helps and I'm just going to put, for my information, code inject. Now that's not the way I'd release it to the public, I'm just doing it while I'm messing around with stuff, so. And let's see, does it do the same thing? Absolutely, take a look over here. So when I turn it on. So we don't need our AOV, but we have it as a backup. If we want to go make it longer and make it more unique, we can do that, but to save us a little time, we're just going to use a regular code injection at that address. So that's what we're going to use. And if you go back over to where I posted in Fearless, that's exactly what I, what I en ended up doing, and it works every time for the version 1.1, okay? It's just up to you, so I, how you want to do it. There is no right or wrong way long as it works you're good so all right i just want to show you that i'll be right back okay i took the game back down and i'm going to bring it back up and uh let's go ahead and do that and i went ahead and got rid of the aob so we're, we're not going to have to worry about that anymore i'm never going to update this game and i'm pretty happy with what i got going on right now so as long as i don't update it for my particular version which is version 1.1 this is always going to work so I'm just going to go ahead and keep that. <coughs> Alright, what we want to do now, let me go ahead and relaunch the Mono Data Collector. Oh, let me select the process first, sorry. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and launch that. And dissect Mono. Bring all this back up. Let's go back to our game right now. Now that we know that our player health is working really well, we're going to see if we can maybe get one hit kills. And we're going to have to do that kind of differently than we normally do. Normally, when we hack a game or something, we go and try to write zero to the enemy's health. We, that's not the only way to get one hit kills, as I've said in the past. You can also modify your damage, which I did for uh, Grim Dawn and also uh, Dark Souls 3 as I modified my damage really high where it kept my level really low but yet my damage I mean I was just doing super damage where I could just instantly kill anything I hit so and that's the way I really like to go with one hit kills is modifying damage but sometimes that could be a little bit harder but we want to go into the character screen here and here's the values that we're kind of looking at right now and this is the, our damage factor now this is what the damage we do to another enemy and it's calculated via a perk that we may have and also items that we may have equipped and here's our total right here now when we're looking for things like this we've got to kind of look for things related to it and like i say this particular game they have just labeled every little thing in here so they're really easy to find if you just don't mind spending the time to just look and read and go play around and believe me when i use mono i will go in here and i will just read everything and i'll just go make different scripts some work some don't and i just get rid of them or whatever but I just go play around with every little thing I find just to see what it does. And sometimes I find some great things I didn't even think about hacking. So, you know. But, you know, to save a little time, this is not the only way to get here is just go down. You can find these 
get to the same points that you're wanting or needing by other means in the uh, data structure here as well. You can also get to where I'm about to go via the combatant, battle combatant, stats view, and stuff like that. It'll send you here. But I'm not doing all that. That'll just take too much time. I'm going to go directly to it. But when I was reading around and messing around and stuff like this, I saw general manager stats, combatant attribute stats, value holder, and all that mess. And finally, I got to here, which is... I wish that thing would stop popping up. Uh, assets for value game. General manager stat transforms base damage stats modifier. You also have... Uh, level the weapon and everything like that which possibly does the same thing but like i say so it really don't matter which one you go to you just got to go mess around and see if it does anything so what i did is i went to this one right here we'll go to transform we're going to jet that one which carries us to that location in memory and there it is you can also search fields up here, and this lets you know the offsets. It just says value for this. That really didn't help me any here. But I, I came down to this op code finally, and I just do what we normally do is I put a debugger on it. And we'll right click on it. And we'll just attach the debugger to the Qi engine and see what kind of addresses are going through that. Now we know it's going to be like a float value. Because it's converting down here right below it. It's writing, if you take a look, it's writing this value to XMMO. And then the next instruction, it says convert a single precision floating point to a double. And that's what it's doing here. So let's put it on float. And what I want to do is I want to go out of the menu. I want to go back into it, see what kind of values we get. Take a look here. We're getting float values, 0 0.1, 0 0.08, 0 0.14, 0 0.05, and blah, 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 this, that, and the other. Well, we know it's representing, obviously, our damage because if we take a look, right here, base damage stats modifier. So we know this is everything to do with how it's calculating our damage total. So what I want to do is I just want to see exactly and i just make a just a generic script a or b injection and we're going to go damage stat that way i know what it's doing if it works great if it don't we'll try another that's all we need to do and what i do is i, I just go off the wall with it and i'll just put move into this address of rsi plus 54 I'll just go in there and put a float 99. We'll assign that to the current cheat table. And the first thing right off the bat I need to do is I need to take that address out. Because that address is not going to be the same. This is not a... Uh, that is not a static location. So we're just going to leave that like that. And let's go take a look and see if it modifies it for us and it created the jump for us so that was uh one two three four five so it made five bytes so that opcode was five bytes long so we're good and we want to go back out of the menu screen and back in let's see if it made any kind of adjustment Ooh, take a look at this let's check our others are our others going through it look at that well that's all well and good but is that just a visual display or does that actually change our damage well we won't know that until we actually go to battle so that's what we're going to do now we're going to turn on our player health oh i gotta turn mono back on sorry about that it turns itself off when you go messing around like that so keep uh keep aware of that it's not perfect but you know it serves a good purpose so. all right so we're all the way up here Let's see if this will let us fight. Yeah, good. All right, I'll just go here instead. <clears throat> All right, let's make sure we check our stats. Yeah, we're on up there. And we'll just enter node and we'll start a battle right away. So we're gonna, we need to check two things. We need to check, see if our health is going down. We need to make sure enemies are going down. We need to make sure also enemies aren't getting one hit kills on us and making sure that we get the one hit kills on the enemies. So, so I'm gonna use her. 
and I'm going to use my main character here. So let's finish deployment. Let's go take a look. We move now, yes? Yes, you do. I can't really hit nobody right now. So let's go ahead and go to him. Let's see if we can use the gun, see if that gives us any kind of kill. No line of sight. Wonderful. And he can't reach over there. Okay, so we're just going to have to go through one more round right quick. I got so used to playing with all my codes on, I didn't have this problem. So I should have kept some of them for the tutorial, huh? All right, doesn't look like their damage is coming off. You see their health bar is completely still full. She was hit. He's been hit, 308, but you see his health is still good. Let's take a look at her. Her health is still good, so we know the health is working. All right, so now it's our turn. So I'm gonna move over here, and we're gonna do the whirlwind. Let's see what happens. Woo, take a look at that. Do you see that? Oh, take a look at that. One hit kills all the way down the board. All right, let's go to our other, our other guy right quick. Oh, yeah, that's what we wanted. So as you see, we got infinite health, one hit kills, and all via the data, uh, the mono data dissector. And like I say, you just have to go through here and just read what each one does. Just trial and error. Make a script somewhere. Go look at some addresses and uh, you can find some really good things. Now, I'm going to link up uh, Stephen Chapman's videos in the description. Also, you'll find them up in the upper right-hand corner. You should go take a look at them. I'll also make my particular cheat table available minus what uh, Colonel RVH has already done. You'll need to go download his cheat table for those, okay? And all those links are in the description for you as well. And uh, go, go take a look at it. And like I say, you can just have a blast in here. And there's just all kind of things that you didn't think about that you can modify. So just go try it out and see what you come up with. All right. Well, thank you, guys. Come join us over at the Cheat the Game Facebook page. We've got a lot of game hackers that hang out there. That would be happy to answer your questions. No, we don't go into online games too much, if hardly at all. However, we're more than happy to help you with cheat engine questions, Lua questions, assembly questions. And they uh, are really, really good. Some of them, they're a lot better than I am. And uh, we're happy to help you. Also, you can join us at our Cheat the Game Facebook, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, CheatTheGame.net website that we're still uh, trying to get up and running. Uh, you can get in on the ground floor there. We'd love to have you there as well. Also, want to thank my partners. Uh, these are the people that have donated to my Patreon. They help keep the website going and help keep the funds uh, going for me so I can keep doing these. And uh, if it wasn't for them, uh, I would already stop doing these by now. So I, I, you know, I really need your help. If you don't mind contributing, it's only a dollar a month. I'm happy to give you a shout out up here with my partners. And here pretty soon, I'm going to be making some bids with tips, tricks, and uh, certain shortcuts that I take and everything like that. That will only be available to Patreon uh, partners. And uh, I'm making that available on Patreon also. So I'm going to be doing some bid touts on there as well. Some advanced stuff that you will not see here on YouTube or anywhere else so keep that in mind also I'd love to have you over there like I say it's only a dollar a month and it helps us out tremendously and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for all you guys that support us I really really do even just coming here and watching the video I mean that that helps us out greatly and we thank you so much now if this does help you out please uh, drop a like on it and if you have not subscribed please subscribe we got more content coming out we're going to be continuing on in the next lesson with with regalia and uh, basically the reason being is I want to show you what happens when cheat engine cannot find an AOB okay it says cannot find a unique array of bytes I'm going to show you a little trick around that that I use all the time that works for me so it's going to be a really good uh, lesson that'll really help you out and that should be in about a week or two so, all right but thank you guys so much and I will catch you guys on the flip side so you all take care keep on hacking most importantly please enjoy yourself that's really what it's all about you cheat the game fellas because believe me
doesn't mind cheating you. You all take care. Of me.